Hi guys, um, it's me. I hope you're doing well today. Just let me get situated. I hope you are enjoying uh, this series that I'm doing called Bobby's Brood. Today is the last part of it, uh, Emily's story, which I'm calling um, which I'm calling social media fast let's pray father i thank you for what you've done and i thank you for the words that you're going to speak in this moment god i pray that you will be um just mag magnified and glorified this day and whatever you want to say i just pray that you say it with power and precision lord god Hide me behind the cross. And Lord God, all, although that social media is now a, a, a good part of our lives, Lord God, help us to use it wisely. Help us to use it to spread love and care and joy and tenderness, oh God. I pray, Lord God, that through this message, uh, social media bullying will stop every every um, demonic agenda on social media will stop and I pray that your spirit will abide in social media like never before Lord this is a new medium Lord God and with everything new Lord we need to know how, know how to navigate and and control it Lord God teach us through this sermon how to navigate and control our social media use our social media time God and I, I thank you and I praise you in the name of Jesus Amen Hi guys like I said today's the last part of my Bobby's Brood series um, and this is Emily's story um, and before I get into it I was having uh, interesting discussion with a friend of mine about how technology has changed and how um, how the lost art of conversation has come upon us. I heard a preacher say that we don't have conversation anymore we have comments and the problem, problem with comments is they're, they're brief and succinct. You don't really get to express what you mean or um, really um, talk to the person. You just say one little thing about something you uh, really don't know anything about and you just... Um, and you just can hurt the person and and do all kinds of damage to this person. So that's what um, that's what Emily's story is going to tackle today. Now let's get started into the story. Um, and I will stop the story periodically, like I've been doing with the others, to comment or expound on the truth as the Lord leads. So here we go. Emily was, ever since she was born, um, social media had been a, a part of her life. 
she got a Facebook account and she was about um, 12 and she just at first it was a great way to for her to um, make friends and keep in touch with the friends that she already um, knew it was quite awesome for her um, to keep in touch with her friends and make friends and uh, to chat with people, to socialize with people. But as she got older, it became an addiction. And some sometimes social media can, can easily become an addiction because you can because it's not only your account that you can see, but depending on the social media site and depending on your settings, you can see other people's accounts. So take for, for instance, now we're on YouTube. So if you're watching this video, uh, my video, another video like mine or with another person can pop up and you can spend all day just purposely watching video after video after video and with Facebook um, you can see not only your feed but your friends feed and your friends accounts and it's so easy to click into what they're doing um, and Emily's issue was she like it started off as an innocent thing when she was about 10 but then by 13 it skyrocketed um, it skyrocketed into a full on obsession with who was doing what who was dating who who was on this vacation with their family who had this boyfriend or girlfriend who had who was um, doing this and she became so consumed with her social media accounts that that other things in her life began to suffer so when her sister was going through um, her whole her whole thing with with cutting and with um, self-harm um, instead of being there for her sister and trying to pray for her sister uh, she began ta talking about it on social media not in a way to inform but in a way to kind of gossip and to to have something to say and I will say something um, two things on this point and then I'll get back to the story um, parents um, be aware of how mature your child is to be on social media um, because a lot of um, parents think their child is mature enough to be on it but their child is not mature enough to handle it and sometimes in this generation we let children grow up too easily and we don't really understand that their minds are not equipped to handle um, reading other speeds or they're not equipped to handle certain things that they see um, children are not us they can't they cannot process things the way adults can and I think sometimes we think that children can do um, more than what they can do especially teens um, they said um, something interesting about teenagers is 
that they look mature, they can talk like adults, they can, they can seemingly reason like adults, but if you look closer, their brains are still developing. And that's the problem with teens and social media. Um, it is, um, it is very imperative that parents monitor their children on social media because if you think it's just innocent fun and innocent things going on, it's not. Social media could be a place for the devil to reign if you're if you're not careful. And many parents who didn't grow up in the generation of social media, they think, oh, it's just innocent fun. Or they can go another way and think that all social media is, is not, is bad. But social media in itself is not bad or good. It's a tool that can be used for bad or good. It's just like money. It's an it's an inanimate object. It's not good or bad. It's how it's used. And if it's used for good, it can be a wonderful thing. And if it's used for bad, it can be um, a horrible thing for people. So my opinion is on social media is I love it. I'm on it. I'm on it right now. You're watching this video on YouTube or Facebook or uh, through Twitter. I'm on it. I love it. But but I'm careful with how I use it and what I post and how I express myself on social media because if like if you have a social media account. Whatever you put up on the media, on social media and any media, is there forever. Even if you press the delete button, there are people out there called hackers that can, um, that can bring up any post. So whatever you post will be there forever. And you need to be aware that whatever you put on social media is there forever. You can't take it back. Um, and, and the thing is, you, when you write something, um, you, you have no idea of the tone in which people are taking it. So, Let's say you and I are talking and there's a specific uh, tone that is being used in my voice. You could tell if I say, oh, Rachel, if you say, oh, Rachel, you look nice today. Or you could say, oh, Rachel, you look nice today. Or you could say, Oh, Rachel, you look nice today. You know, there is different ways you can say things. But on social media, you can't tell the tone in which the person meant the thing. So somebody can type something and somebody else can take offense to it because they didn't hear the tone in which it was said. And a lot of drama is started on social media simply because of misunderstanding. Sometimes there is outright bu bullying and that needs to be stopped. But sometimes it's just simple misunderstanding. And I think um, sometimes people hide behind their social media accounts because it is easier to hate and shoot a clear shot on pe people on social media 
because you don't know them and you're not standing close to them and you're not and you're not having any personal dealings with them but remember on the other side of that screen that there is a living breathing thinking feeling person with thoughts and with feelings and with hopes and with dreams and with fears and with cares and with kids and with family and when you put something out on social media it doesn't just affect them good or bad it affects the people around them it affects their family it affects their friends and it can really affect their lives so just be aware of that and social media can be used as a, as a good tool too to spread the word of god to spread good quotes and to spread um love to people and to spread joy to people and to make people's day so use the to um the tool of social media for good and not evil um i always think of paul if he had facebook or insta in his day what he could have done in his ministry i don't think the church is util utilizing social media the way we could um i think there's room for improvement but that's a whole other story i think we need to take stock of what we use social media for and use it for good and not evil anyway back to melissa so as i said not melissa why do i keep saying melissa back to her sister emily um as i was saying emily was really into social media and she would post everything on facebook what whatever was happening in her family whatever was um going on in her life she would post everything on social media and can i say this as a side note social media is not for you to um post all your issues with somebody or to uh, vomit up what you think about somebody's clothes or somebody's life or whatever um if you have a beef with somebody if you have an issue with somebody go privately because every social media has a way you can contact the person privately or even better pick up the phone or or text them or call them and talk it out work it out don't i've seen too many people vomit up or spew up their issues with other people publicly on social media social media is not for that social media is to connect with people that you don't see or maybe that you do see but it's hard to connect with them it's not to vomit up personal issues and i'm sick of seeing it on facebook on twitter just people's personal issues with people and people's personal views with celebrities and you know people's opinions on things they they have no right having opinions on my thing is this this is my personal opinion if it doesn't have anything to do with you directly or indirectly stay out of it don't have an opinion about it you don't unless it's in the word of god you don't have to have an opinion about everything about everybody's life about every celebrity's divorce or whatever like too many people because of social media 
are involved in too many people's lives and I think we need to we need to help each other and if that person needs our help that's one thing but if we're just going around and spewing gossip on social media or spewing that person's uh, private affair on social media that's not a good thing if someone tells you something in confidence treasure it because they could have come to anybody they could have come to um, anyone they wanted and they chose you so value that person's confidence with your life and if you feel you have to tell someone because of like that person's gonna hurt themselves or something tell the person first that look I I know you I know you um, asked me to keep it to myself but I can't because of this reason can I tell this person and only tell that person so back to Emily uh, what happened with Emily is because she was really into social media all her time all her her friends she wouldn't see them on per in person she would text them on face she would message them on Facebook and send pictures to them on Instagram she wouldn't really connect with them and what started happening in her life is when she got to see them in person she had a hard time actually talking to them actually starting conversation with them um, and I think sometimes that's what social media does it insulates us to the point that we don't have or can't have actual conversations with people there are people out there that can say a whole bunch of stuff they can write a whole uh, 300 word post on Facebook but they can't talk to people and I think we need although social media is great we need to get back to conversation we need to get back to sitting down with people discussing discussing things with people sharing with people sharing love with people and although social media is great we need to get back to the personal touch with people and I think that's what people people are missing people are missing personal touches they're they're behind the screens but they're more lonely behind the screens than ever they have like uh, five billion friends on Facebook but they don't even have um, one friend to call them in 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 private to say how you doing uh, sister how you doing brother I think we need to come out from behind our screens just for a moment and really start to see the people in in our lives see their needs see their hope see their dreams see what's bu bugging them see what their missions are in life and really start having conversations with people to say how we feel how they feel I think most of the problems in the world would be avoided if we could just have a conversation and I think if we would just sit down with each other put down our phones put down our tablets turn off our computers just for a second and just conversate with people sit down with people get to know people look them in the eye 
we would get to know a lot. We would fix some of the world's problems, most of the world's problems, I wouldn't hesitate to say, if we would just talk to, talk to the leaders. I always say a conversation can do in, in 30 minutes what a Facebook post can't do in a lifetime. Um, and I think we really need to get back to the conversation and being present with people. Um, I, I find sometimes, um, like people could be sitting at the table with people, with other people, but then when they're sitting at the table with people, they're texting another person. So why did you sit at the table with me? Why did you invite me out and text another person? When you're present in the moment, be present in that moment. Because you never know what can come out of that person person's need. You never know what can come out of that conversation. And a lot of us are, we, we, when we're in a moment, we're not in the moment. We're thinking about other things and that's what happens. So back to, back to Emily. Um, so what started it happen happening with Emily she spent so much time on Facebook so much time on Instagram that she kind of lost who she was she was so involved in other people's lives and their post and what they were doing um, that she just totally got absorbed with them and her relationship with God started to suffer. Now, at the age of seven, she accepted Christ. But um, as she got older and more into social media, her relationship with Christ waned. And a friend sent her a post that I did a few weeks ago which I will read in a few minutes about putting social media media down and really just spending time with God. And another thing that, another kind of negative thing that social media does, it pulls us away not only from the people around us in our lives, but it pulls us away from God. And God is calling us to return to him, to put down our Facebook, to put down our Instagram, to put down our YouTube and spend time with him. Not to eradicate social media uh, completely, but just to take a few minutes and spend time with him. And that's what Emily did. Now, before she went on this social media fast, she didn't know who she was. She was obsessed with what other people were doing. She dressed the way her friends would dress. She would see a post on Facebook and ask her mom to buy her that, that certain thing or do that certain thing. She would see a post on Facebook and say we need to uh, dress, we need to go to this vacation. She would see who was dating who and you know, um, and talk about who others, who, who that, that person was dating and discuss their relationship and really gossip. And when she saw my post, which I will read to you, her heart was convicted 
like she sat in church Sunday after Sunday while her parents were going through what they were going through while her sister was going through cutting while her brother was going through what he was going through with with her niece and his wife and all she did was tweet about it she didn't offer comfort she didn't you know offer strength all she did was gossip about it with her friends publicly on social media so that so that caused a rift in her family because they didn't want their business all on social media and she put it there for all the world to see. So when Melissa, her sister, had that problem with cutting, she posted about that. When her brother, Ryan, was having issues with his wife and his wife and uh, clubbing and sleeping with women he shouldn't have been sleeping with, she posted about that. So it caused a rift within her family. When she saw my post, um, my real post, um, her heart was convicted and she said, Lord, I'm so sorry I did so many bad things. What would you want me to do? And the Lord said, uh, um, the Lord said, go to First Chronicles um, First Chronicles and she opened it to uh, First Chronicles and read the scripture that says I think it's First Chronicles 7 it says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven, forgive sin, and heal their land. Um, she had always heard this scripture growing up, but in her mind, it was talking about a country, about a province, and about a city but the Lord revealed it to her that her land was the, the territory that he had given to her uh, was, the, was the environment she was placed in. So she needed to humble herself and pray and seek his face for the environment she had been placed in uh, to heal the rift within her family because of her social media use. So what the Lord, uh, what she saw herself doing was not, not putting down food or not putting down other stuff, but giving up social media for a month. And for the first, when she woke up, she got this in a dream. And when she woke up from the dream, she was like, no, that couldn't have been God. And she just went on about her business. And God um, brought it to her mind again to give up social media. Sometimes when we when we don't want to do what God says, uh, we make excuses. And that's what she did. She said, God, I need to use social media for school. I need to use social media for, every, for everything. How am I supposed to give it up? And the Lord said, trust me. Sometimes God will ask, ask us to trust him without knowing uh, what we're really trusting him about. So one day she said, okay, God. One day she was really feeling overwhelmed and sad because someone 
uh, because of all the posts she was seeing and because of all the happy relationships she was seeing and because of all of the stuff that she just felt overwhelmed. She was like, God, what do I do? And God said, put social media down for a month. So she did. And the first day she put social media down, it was really hard. And the second day it was really hard. All the way up until a week, which is the seventh day. On the eighth day, it got easier. On the ninth day, it got easier. And as she put social media down, God started to reveal stuff to her about her life, about her purpose, things that she was previously confused about. God just started to reveal. And at the end of her fast, when she could turn on social media, she found out that the desire for uh, to know what people were doing, how people were faring, was not non-existent, but, but very low. Because she had been without it for so long. She had been picking up her word. She had been... Um, really delving into the things of God and really seeing what she what he had to say about her life really connecting with him talking with him praying more and sometimes social media can be used as a demonic distraction and for, for Emily, that's exactly what it, it was used for. And when she went on on the fast, the social media fast, she starved her spirit, starved her um, body and her desires to feed her spirit, just like regular fasting. But with regular fasting, it's physical food. But this was social media. And then after the fast was over, she was a much better person. And she began to share her social media fast with other people. And they started fasting. And they shared it with their friends. And she started the movement at her church and in the community um, so much so that every year around the same time, the whole town went on a social media fast and the healings and the prayers and um, the miracles that came out of that fast were awesome. And I'm in no way saying not to use social media, but I'm saying not to let it take over your life. Make time for God. Make time for the people around you. Make time for the people that mean the most to you. I'm going to read the post um, that I wrote a few months ago. Uh, this is a word that the Lord has given to me a few months ago on social media. Some of you may have read it, but for those of you who haven't, I'll read it again. And then as soon as I read it, I'll close. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to us in that wonderful way. And God, I praise you and I lift you up, God. You are awesome and worthy. And Lord God, cause us to put down social media for a second for your sake. Cause us to know that you want to speak to us in a special way. In the name of Jesus, thank you for every soul, every spirit, every heart listening to this thing. I pray that it will minister.
I pray that you're pleased with this sermon, and my prayer is that it glorifies you above all and helps people to see that they're more than their phones and more than their tablets and more than Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, that they're yours and you just want to be a part of their lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. So now I'm going to read the post, the real post that my character Emily saw that caused this change in her heart. And directly after that, I'm going to um, sign off. So, excuse me while my head gets bigger because I have to um, go close to the computer. Okay. It reads, it reads like this. It reads like this. It reads, the baby of intimacy is perfect. Many, all capital, of you are wondering what your purpose is trying to figure out where you belong and what the Lord wants you to do with your life where where he wants you I hear the Lord saying my son my daughter it's too loud in your life there's too much noise either from your job your friends social media 
I need to get you alone so I can speak to you, not your not your pastor or preachers on the internet. Me, I, I want to speak to you. My deepest desire is to be close to you, but I can't do that with so many things and people crowding your mind. I need to get you alone with I need to get alone with you. I need to get alone. I need to get, okay, sorry. I need to get you alone with me so that I can speak to you. And so I can go down into the recesses of your heart and spirit and spirit. I want to heal what has been broken for years. Babies are, babies are not created in a crowd. They are created in private. And nine months later, we see the fruit in public. Maybe the lack of fruit in your life, maybe the lack of fruit in your life is because of the lack of intimacy with God in private. The reason you don't have spiritual babies is, is because you refuse to get intimate, intimate with the only one who can show you your purpose, you what your purpose is and who you're supposed to be. So that's the post that she saw, that Emily saw, that stirred her to have a social media fact. I'm not saying that social media fasting is for everybody, but but even take take a time in your day that you would usually be on social media and spend that time just in reflecting. And the next day, take that same time that you would spend on social media um, surfing or whatever and spend time with friends and family and maybe you'd be surprised in what you found and what you find in how richer your relationships would be with your family and friends and those closest to you um, so guys I will see you later I will see you next week for another sermon God bless you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you.
just to be close to you is my desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. We just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. Lord, we don't want to worship from afar. Draw us near to where you are. We want to be where you table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where we always want to be, we just want to be with you, we just want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, forever take us to the place where you are we just want to be with you lord show us how to do that god in our own individual lives show us how to to draw close to you lord god draws near Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw us nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to Thy precious bleeding side. Jesus, we bless you and we praise you. Draw us nearer today. Take away all distractions, oh God. Help us to do this thing right. Help us to do this life thing right. Help us to, to use social media in a way that glorifies you and not ourselves and not Satan. Cause us not to sow discord on social media, but to show, but to sow love and peace and respect, oh God. Cause us to be you on social media. Cause us to bring life and not death and cruelness on social media. Father, cause us, cause us to use social media for your glory, Lord God, and not for our gain. Lord God, cause us to, to use it as a tool for your power and for your grace. God, c come and dwell within us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.